everybody, this is Captain Kyle. Welcome to a, another installment of the Future of Cons. I have Dave O'Hare from Garden State Comic Fest, and we're gonna talk about the future of his con, and we're also gonna talk about the past because they actually managed to have a successful con during this pandemic, and we're gonna talk about that. How are you doing today, Dave? Very good, very good, glad to be here. Glad you could uh, join uh, us. And Same here, well, it wasn't like we had a lot of other things to do. <laughs> Well, you know, collecting toys, I can see, which is always a fun thing. Always. Garden State Comic Fest, for those who don't know, is a con that is usually about three times a year here in the state of New Jersey. But because of the pandemic, things were a little crazy. But you managed to put together a con that happened at a mall. Tell me about that, Dave. Well, uh, this year, uh, for the second time, we actually uh, were able to pull off Garden State Comic Fest Winter Edition. And Winter Edition is a smaller, uh, I won't even call it a con, it is a show. It's a comic show where you get a few hundred people over the course of three days, you know. And uh, we decided, you know, by looking at the science and everything else out there, uh, that with the restrictions getting lighter, we were able to do this. We felt it was time. We've always been pioneers of trying to try new things and get out there before everybody else. We put together a Garden State Comic Fest Winter Edition. It lasted three days in January. We had just over a thousand people over the course of three days. And we put every COVID restriction you can think of in place. And we had absolutely zero, zero COVID cases, transfers, anything to do with COVID. Actually, I haven't even heard anybody come back with a cold, con crud, or anything else. <laughs> so uh, we, we were very fortunate, but at the same time, with the information that we had on hand, uh, we, we knew it was going to end up that way. And uh, mostly it's due to the fans, because the fans actually took everything serious. And we didn't have to really scold anyone or anything like that. So it was a great, great time. Well, that's awesome. I heard a lot of positive things. I heard the vendors did really well. And I saw pictures and it definitely looked like there was a lot of space there. Um, right. It was on two levels, I understand, of a former Models. Is that correct? It was a former Models, uh, two levels. It was 18,000 square feet. And we had the same amount of vendors that we would normally have at about 5,000 square feet. So every, everything was spread out. Everybody enjoyed it. Like I said, the vendors did phenomenal. And believe it or not, when you, when you break down a show or a con, as people call them, the most important thing is the vendors and the independent artists. These are the guys that spend money for their tables. And without them... We don't have a show because it, it's their money that pays the bills for everything else. And having a year off with no income coming in, you know, I, I just felt it was really important to do something for these guys to uh, get them going again. You can't really have a show without them. And, and yeah, I know it's been tough. I know vendors who have basically their livelihood was cons and then everything got shut down. So right. uh, I'm glad you were able to do it and you were able to do it safely. Uh, did you get some type of accommodation? I understand this was inside of a mall, like attached to a mall. Did you get like discount rates? Were they willing to work with you? Or were, was it like, no, no, we want full boat? Well, uh, because you're renting the space for only a week, uh, you are negotiating a special type of lease with a mall uh, to do it, especially inside a store area, not just out in general mall hood. But uh <laughs> You know, we, we got a good price. Uh, Rockaway Mall, where we held it, I grew up in Rockaway. And that was something special to me as well, to bring something back to the town that I grew up in. And uh, the Morris County COVID mega site for vaccines was actually right next door. <laughs> so that, that was kind of interesting as well. It was probably the hardest show I ever put together. For as much excitement and everything that people had, we also got a lot of hate mail. I had quite a few messages of wishing me dead, wishing my family dead, uh, hoping that we get COVID. I, I had a couple saying that I was going to spread COVID throughout the entire East Coast and kill off the East Coast. I, I mean, it, it, it was getting a little ridiculous for a while. And at the beginning, it was funny. But 
after a while that starts to wear on you. I can definitely get that. And and yes, I can see where people might be a little concerned just because every other con is shutting down. San Diego just announced that they're doing it virtual again this year. Shore Leave, which is another con that's wasn't scheduled until July, just announced today that they are going to do a virtual event instead. So there's a lot of concern, but at the same time, to wish someone dead, that's a little extreme. Correct. I, I had a lot of people uh, telling me they hate me. Uh, like I said, wishing my family dead. It, it was uh, it was interesting. Um, and you know what? In today's day and age, you should have a lot of concern. Um, a lot of people reached out and said, hey, what are you guys doing? What precautions? And we'd go through the list of the masks, the uh, social distancing, even for the vendors, separating the vendors out, only allowing 150 attendees in at a time in 18,000 square feet. That's nothing. Um, so every person in there had 10 square feet to themselves. And what we also did was we uh, partnered up with Aris, which they brought in the uh, air mega blasters, which actually clean the entire air uh, system throughout the place and sterilizes every surface in the place while they're running so it's the same stuff that they use on the space stations space shuttle and stuff like that and that that was one of the big things that we did wow it sounds (laughs) that sounds like quite a uh, (laughs) accomplishment it's like yeah we're actually cleansing the air as you're walking in so right yeah i had heard that you were having the con i also had concerns hearing that there was a con but then I listened to everyone who attended and they basically said that it was a great time. It was very distant that you put a lot of precautions in place. Going forward, how do you think it's going to affect your future cons? Are you going to have the same level? Is it going to maybe scale back a little bit, do you think? It's hard to tell entirely at this point, but... You know, we won't it's, hold you to anything. <laughs> it's very hard to tell at this point. Uh, what I would say is, like, we were lucky from what I understand. Uh, yesterday was the first day that we had more vaccinated people in the country than we had cases that came out. So it is on that upward trend. And uh, according to the CDC and everything, by May, there should be a vaccination for everyone out there, which, which is great. Um, looking forward to that. But at the same time, we have to continue to be vigilant, make sure that we're remaining safe for everybody. So our next show, as we are going to have the same precautions in place, we will be limiting how many people on the show floor at a time. Uh, social distancing, wide aisles, which we've always done anyway. You've seen our shows. We have some of the widest aisles because in the past it was always, I'm a true fan of shows and I never like getting rushed along. Like in New York Comic Con, you go, oh, wow, I like that. And next thing you know, you're three boots down because the wave just kind of pushes you. I've always enjoyed the intimate experience where you could actually stop and look and shop that actually kind of helps us because it turned out to be a big uh, plus when it comes to COVID to have that much space as well. Yeah, we, we will have everything unless the CDC comes out and says, okay, you know, it's all over. Yay. But <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to happen. So right right now, uh, I will officially say uh, Garden State Comic Fest Summer Edition will be being announced next week. It will be the first weekend in June, June 4th, 5th, and 6th. It'll be a three-day show, and we will be having a new venue. So, uh, you know, normally we're in Menin Arena during the summer. Unfortunately, Menin Arena is a county-run facility, and they had canceled all of 2021 at the end of 2020. I think they wish they could go back on that now, but what what are you going to do? They can't fight their own city hall. Exactly. (laughs) So with the summer edition, I know in the past you've had a few um, celebrity guests. You've had a few comic artist guests. First of all, I didn't hear too much about um, a lot of guests at the winter edition. It it sounded like it was mainly the vendors and the cosplay and all that, which is always a fun time to me. Are you planning on having some guests at the summer edition? Garden State Comic Fest 
has always been an artist first convention. You know, it, it, to us, the artists are the superstars. It, w- without the artists and the writers, there's no comic books. Without the comic books, there's no movies. I, I'm sorry, but, you know, Henry Cavill is not Superman if it wasn't for, you know, Schuster making that character for him. We've always put them first and foremost. Winter Edition, we had some phenomenal artists that came out. It, it, was, it was still tough because a lot of people are still scared to be out. But Larry Stroman, Scott Hanna... Uh, Bill McKay came up from North Carolina and then quarantined for 14 days before, like, uh, they, they followed every procedure they needed to, and these guys did great. Uh, some of the local huge names that we have, like Chris Campana, uh, Nick Justice were there. The summer edition is going to be based mostly on uh, the artists again. Celebrities are great. Celebrities are great for shows. Celebrities are great for bringing in a lot more people. I don't know if we're there yet. Every celebrity gets guarantee. They have to make a certain amount of money. And we're still trying to figure out how do you do photo ops to make that money. It's a catch-22. Piece of plexiglass in between them and one sitting on each side. (laughs) It it is. And to be honest with you, though, I've said that to a couple people. And I I start to say it in my head. I'm going, why why would I pay to sit next to – it's like sitting next to somebody at a bus stop. Uh, I, I wouldn't want that. So uh, if I can't do it the right way, I don't think I'd want to do it. Understandable. Now, you've also had uh, Garden State Comic Fest, the Great Adventure edition. Correct. Now, now is that going to be coming back this year, or are we looking at next year, or are we looking at – or is it still up in the year? We are in contract negotiations right now to bring it back this year. Uh it looks as if it's 95% don't hold it to me because uh, obviously uh, the I's are not dotted and the T's are not crossed. But uh, it looks to me it's going to be Labor Day this year. So okay. Labor Day weekend instead of Memorial Day weekend. They wanted to make sure uh, that the park was fully operational before they did it. No- normally we're always on Memorial Day weekend, but we're, we're pushing it back. So hopefully it's it'll be a big hurrah before everybody gets to actually go back to school. So, and that's usually a uh, a more compact con within the park, anyway, right? It's a it's a much smaller show. Uh, it's more for the park attendees. Uh, we we do bring in celebrity guests for that a lot every year. Um, it, it's a great time because I mean, where where else do you get to go out buy a comic? or see a cosplayer for Wonder Woman, then meet Wonder Woman, and then go on Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth ride at the same time. I mean, (laughs) you know, the entire park is DC-based, which is pretty amazing. Well, it's great that you're going forward with cons, because I know a lot of people have been very, well, they've been missing cons, but they've also been very concerned about cons. Do you think that having one in uh, in the books already that had zero impact as far as COVID spread is going to help people have more confidence in cons? Because I I think that's a big issue, is people being confident enough to actually attend cons. I would hope so. But at the same time, I I think it's very important that you look at the show, every show individually. Not every promoter is the same uh, out there. I've gone to another show this year where I walked in and went, oh, God, no, I have to get out of here because it, it seemed like nothing was in place. And that scared me. But, uh, you know, as long as it is a show that is putting safety first of not only the vendors and artists, but also the fans and is using the common sense of every the protocols that are in place, it it can be a very fun time still. Uh, It's different. Everything is different now, but it could definitely still be a lot of fun. And it's a great day out. So we'll see it that way. But I would definitely look at each show individually and make a decision. I I wouldn't say all shows are going to be the same on that level. Yeah, and obviously that's part of the reason for this series is so we can talk to various cons and see what they're doing. But it sounds like you have a great handle on things. Tell people where they can find Garden State Comic Fest online. Well, we are on every social media platform you can think of, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
Uh, you can find us at Garden State Comic Fest, GS Comic Fest uh, for short. Uh, also, our website is gscomicfest.com. And we will have a lot more information coming up very shortly on what's coming up in summer. We're looking forward to that. Awesome. And you heard it first here. June 4th through 6th will be the summer edition of Garden State Comic Fest. All the links and social media links are in the description so people can check those out. Thank you so much, Dave, for talking to me today. Thank you for having me. I, I love doing these and uh, anytime you ever want to talk. Uh -huh. And everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. And we will see you next time. And as always, have fun and follow your fandom.